Someone's come to Castle Grayskull to wreak havoc. Here's your look at the Mattel Master Universe Revelation Skeletor. For ages, Skeletor ravaged the land and terrorized the people of Eternia in his quest to capture all the power in the universe for himself. Now the nefarious scourge of Eternia plots his final hostile takeover of Castle Greyskull. With dark magic, devious technology, and an army of loyal soldiers at his back, this sinister sorcerer believes this time nothing can stop him, not even He-Man. Now it's time to spotlight Skeletor, but before we do that, of course, let's first figure out how tall does the figure stand, taking it right to the very top of his hooded cloak. Skeletor stands 8, well, 8.051 inches. Why don't we just call him 8? We'll go with 8. 8, 8, 8. Switching that over, though, the centimeters, the figure stands almost 20 and a half centimeters, 20.4 centimeters to be exact. Marking now the second Master Universe Revelation figure that we had a look at, we can bring in the previously looked at He-Man so you can see the difference in size. I would have just assumed that they were using a lot of the same bodies, but it does seem like He-Man is a slight taller figure than Skeletor. And for some fun as well, we can also bring in the Masters of the Universe Origins Skeletor. Just to show you how much taller the Revelation version of Skeletor is when you compare him next to him. Like I had said in my review of He-Man, having watched last night Master Universe Revelation, all five parts on Netflix, I'm going to avoid, if I can, to talk about the cartoon in this review. I may mention a few things here and there, but it's definitely not going to be any spoiler talk. I really don't want to bog this review down with unnecessary spoiler talk. And if you have seen Master Universe Revelations, feel free to weigh in your thoughts down below. But if you can, for the kindness of others that haven't seen the series, try to not put any spoilers in there. Just kind of let me know whether you liked or disliked this series. Now, of the included accessories that come include with Skeletor, he comes with one accessory that plays a somewhat significant role in the first part episode. It's this right here. I think he calls it the Transformation Staff. And short of me actually telling you what he actually uses it for, um, it's molded here all in gold plastic. In a way, it kind of looks Egyptian to me with a almost Omega shape on the top there. It's a very thick molded accessory. And for the fact that it only plays the role in the first episode, it seems almost like a throwaway accessory that they would have thrown with the figure in the first place. You can display it, of course, this with Skeletor. I think I'm more inclined, I think, to display him with the Havoc staff. Hey, I've got his head in the inside of the ring. So easily amused. I'm going to put that to the side and look at more of the... Much more interesting, if you ask me, Havoc Staff, which has some, I will say, some substantial weight to it. As you could probably guess it, all the weight is sort of centered around the ram skull on the top there. It's familiar and yet a very different looking Havoc Staff that we've seen before. Much, much wider, as you can see, a much longer ram head. The paintwork on this is really quite good, though. Already taking what seems to be a purple-based gray and then washing over top of it black, it really does bring a lot of those details to the forefront. Really like the look of that. Of course, you can take this and put this into his hand. Currently getting the figure out of the packaging, he has one closed fist, and he has one open hand. So you can kind of already assume which hand you're going to be putting it inside of. Of course, it comes with other hands as well. Now, I find the grip... Not my grip, Skeletor's grip, was really close to the palm. I've already heated this already. The thing I will say, though, is be very careful. You can see that there's stress lines developing on the inside of his fingers. It probably doesn't help much that they've made both the Havoc Staff and the Transformation Staff so thick of a handle that you do sort of have to pry the fingers in order to get him to hold it properly. He holds it okay. It seems, if you get it in just the right place, it seems to stay there. On other occasions, though, when you are putting it into his hand, it seems to slide, just slide a lot into his grip. But I'm probably going to be displaying Skeletor, I think, with the Havoc Staff. Now, I did say, though, he also comes included with a couple of other hands as well. Comes with a relaxed hand that's really technically going to go on this side. It almost seems the similar style of hand, although it's not, obviously, to the one that came in with He-Man for him holding the shield. So there's that. I don't really know what I would necessarily do with this, because he doesn't come with really any other accessories. And he comes with this as well. Kind of a pointing hand, a much much nicer looking hand if you ask me than the grip hand that he's got right now, the closed fist. Let's go ahead, 
just remove that hand right now. I'm gonna go ahead and just pop that from the from the from the forearm. I couldn't get that quite out. We're gonna go ahead and just replace the hand in there. There we go. Forearm, forearm. And you've got Skeletor kind of with a pointing hand instead. That, I'm sure, is going to be a much more interesting way of displaying the figure on my shelf. Let's go ahead and get the Havoc Staff out from his grip. Put that to the side. And again, just quickly looking at the hands here. Now, I heated this up in hot water. I guess I didn't heat it up nearly enough. But you can already see there's some stress lines developing on the inside. Sort of around the first knuckle, I guess, of his fingers. So you want to be careful here. Maybe the plastic isn't pliable enough that bending the hand is starting to stre stress and fracture the plastic. I really hope that's not the case. Okay, so let's get a closer look here at Skeletor, coming, of course, from the Master of the Universe Revelation, voiced by Mark Hamill. Not liking Mark Hamill, I have to admit, as Skeletor. He just comes across more like a raspy joker. And I'm an Alan Oppenheimer fan myself. I kind of like Skeletor with this classic cartoon uh, voice. So it seemed kind of just strange that Joker was talking instead of, scare, uh, in instead of Skeletor here. But that being the case, despite that being the case, um, getting a closer look at the head sculpt, it's not a bad looking head sculpt. There are things I would probably have changed to it. If watching the series, you probably will recognize one thing. Skeletor's face is a much more whiter, whiter complexion in the cartoon. Here, what they've almost given him is almost like a, an off greenish bone color. In some ways, it kind of looks like it's slightly greenish tint. In other cases, it kind of looks like it's slightly beige. But I would have made that face solid white. In the cartoon, it's kind of more of a, more of a white face. That the, the actual sculpting is pretty good, I will say. Like the teeth, like the sunken in eyes like this, and even the additional brushing of black that they've done to the top of his head actually does look quite good on the figure. Short of changing the face, making it a lot whiter than what it is. The other thing that I find I don't care for on this figure is that the hood seems really small. Doesn't it? Is it just me? It feels like it's too too close to his face. Like it shrunk down on size. I probably would have made that a lot bigger. I like how it reaches out like this and how he's got the little point on the back of the hood. But I would have certainly made the sides of the hood a lot bigger. So it sort of engulfed his mask instead of actually just looking like his face is part of the hood itself. Minor gripes, minor gripes. I will say like my takeaway on this is I really like this one a lot more than He-Man. It's got some good colors going for it. Fairly accurate, I feel, to the Master Universe Revelation cartoon. The purple and then you got that mixed with the dark purple and the little flaps of his armor on the side. And then you got the additional darker purple, even though it kind of comes across more like black here. It's like, it seems like it's a really super, super dark purple. And that works really quite well with the continuation of the lighter purple at the top, which is just, again, more that color that they they put in the hood area there. Now, he does have a cape. The cape is almost more of a felt material. And what they've done is they've rooted it underneath this piece right here. In fact, actually, one of the problems with the figure is because they put the cape just underneath it, this never stays flush to his body. There's a gap, you see, that that forms just uh, between this part and this part right here, sort of serving as a cape sandwich. Mm, cape sandwich, that sounds delicious. I wish there was a peg or something there that they could have tabbed the, the two together. I dare want to say the word glue, but I guess you probably could put a little adhesive in there or maybe like double-sided tape or something like that to stick this down. I just wish it I just wish it didn't lift up as much as it did. It doesn't even really need to be the case for articulation necessarily. It's just just simply the case that this is the top half of the figure. They put the cape underneath it and then they just literally put the the shoulder piece on top of it. I really wish that like I said this attached a little bit more. Especially the fact that when you're looking at the crossbones, it looks so disjointed when you see the top of the crossbones just sort of shifting around. They really should be a lot closer to the center of his body like that. But I'm sure I can, like I said, fi I can fix that. I can fix that. I'm good enough, I think, with glue. I think I'd probably go in there and fix it. The coloring of his body, again, is pretty good. Um, once again, though, very porous on the, the torso area here. It's that sh shiny, sweaty side of plastic that He-Man had also as well. And yet, funny enough, his arms don't have it. And I guess you could say his face is slightly shiny as well. What is it about giving these guys shiny torsos and then more of a matte finish? on? It must be the type of plastic that they're using, but you would think that they probably would be using the same plastic for the arms as well. Even like the legs too. 
don't have any bit of sheen going for them. It is only really localized right here. I don't know. They just seem to like really sweaty torsos, I guess. He does have the lower skirting here, which does have some additional detailing. I would have just assumed that that would have been all done in black, but there's all these little Dorito shapes painted in there as well. It seems like it doesn't serve a purpose, really. Painting this, I feel, all in black would have been fine and good. I don't know why they would have wanted to add all these additional little triangles of color. But they're there, I guess, if you gives you a little something extra to look at, I suppose, for the figure. And then, of course, we get down to Skeletor's feet. Quite substantially large feet as well. And you can see he's been branded underneath there with some really large pickles. His feet look a little swollen quite on the large side, especially when you put the figure down and you're looking at it from a distance, you think to yourself, wow, that guy's got some big feet. He's got really big feet. Uh, again, that probably would be something I would have shrunk down just a little bit. I feel like his feet, not his footwear. Those are his real feet. I feel like they're a little bit too big on the figure. Looking now at the possibility on Skeletor, his head is on a ball joint. So because of that, it allows the head to rotate all the way around. It allows the hinge up, down, and you can also rock it slightly back and forth as well. If you have the head sit really low, you're not going to notice it as much. If you have the head sitting up, though, you can see the still common problem comes with Skeletors is that they never paint the area of the neck between the top of the hood and the bottom, well, this part of his shoulder armor. One of these days, I would love to see them actually go in there and paint that so it looks like it's a continuation of his armor. Again, when you have the head low, it's not so much of an issue because you really aren't going to see it, but anytime you want to bring the head up, you're going to see Skeletor's blue neck underneath it. For his upper torso, let's go ahead and get in there. He has an upper torso ball joint, some really nice movement going on there. And he also has a secondary, it seems only like a swivel. doesn't seem like there's a ball joint happening there, but at least you get the one at the top there going for it. As for his arms, you can bring the arms out, similar to He-Man's. And even though Skeletor does appear to be slightly smaller than He-Man, it looks like they probably used a lot of the same body elements, like the bicep, like the shoulder, like the torso here, pretty much contained to this part of the figure if I was to cut off Skeletor's arms. That's gruesome. But yeah, you can rotate the arms all the way around. You're going to kind of get a little hung up there on the top flaps that stick out from his armor. But you can also rotate his biceps all the way around. He has a double hinge on the elbow, one and two. It almost seems as if he's able to bend his elbows just a little bit better than what He-Man was doing before. I think the arms are the exact same between the two. In fact, let's just quickly bring He-Man back in just to see. Yeah, they seem to be the same. One of the problems also, too, is, and that it's not just Master Universe Revelation figures, but it's just across the board. Whenever they put a double hinge on the elbow, usually what they then have to sacrifice is this part right here on the arm. It looks like it's just a cut-in part of their arm, like somebody just took a big chunk out of it. It's unfortunately, though, one of the trade-offs if it means the figure can get a double hinge happening here. So there's that. It's a little ugly if you see it from the side, but it's not so bad. It's not so bad if you see it from the front. Uh, where were we? Where were we? Okay, so double hinge on the elbow. I get so sidetracked. Hands rotate all the way around. You can also hinge them back and forth. Then for the legs, the legs split out a little bit more hindered by the skirting of Skeletor. The skirting of Skeletor. You can bring the legs forward, you can bring the legs back. Three quarters of the way up the thigh is a swivel cut, which allows the legs to rotate all the way around. You can double hinge the knees. Skeletor has articulation a little too loose for my liking down here. Both the legs seem a little loose the way that those were pegged in place. And then, of course, you can bring his feet back and forth. Those are also a little bit loose, which is really strange because I can't imagine that they've used this mold for anything else. This is the first and only time that we've gotten molded feet and pegged feet looking like this. Then why are the feet so loose, so right out, so quickly out of the packaging? Anyways, he does have ankle pivots there as well. And there you have Skeletor. Uh, I have less problems really with Skeletor. Granted, there still are things that I would have changed to him. I'm leaving a space right now. We can bring back in He-Man. There we go. Yeah, you know, overall... Skeletor is a little on the shorter side, but I do like the design of him a lot more. The face sculpt, though, probably would have made that a little more paler to match the cartoon. And yes, the hood seems really close to his face. Overall, I do think I like this figure a lot more than He-Man, the most or formerly the most powerful man in the universe.
Now spinning on the rotisserie, hmm, what's for dinner? We have Skeletor here displayed with his Havoc staff. Though I appreciate the fact that they included that one scene-specific accessory, the transformation staff. I'm never going to really display that with Skeletor. It just seems so out of place. And it definitely doesn't match the color scheme. He's all about purples. That's too yellow for him, I think. The character has some nice design elements going for it. And as you can see from the other figures featured on the back of the packaging, we're halfway through things. There was also the Moss Man and Evil Lynn that was released as part of the first wave. And unfortunately, though, as it seems to always be the case with this humbled reviewer, I try so hard to find these figures. And unfortunately, local Walmart Walmarts still don't stock them. So I had to pick up both He-Man and Skeletor over on eBay. I still have yet to track down Moss Man and Evil Lynn. But yes, rest assured, there will be more reviews of Master Universe Revelation figures coming your way. Skeletor, though, does have some nice design elements for it. He has, you know, problems that normal Skeletors will have, like the blue neck problem that's just underneath his hood. I think if you have the hood also low enough, too, it conceals the problem that I also have with this figure, that the hood seems a little a tad on the small side. Uh, but he does, like I said, have some nice design elements for it. And even though he does still have the sweaty torso, why are we continuing to give these figures all sweaty torsos? Um, he at least looks a little bit better with the sweat, unlike He-Man. I think... Maybe the way Skeletor's armor is, maybe it conceals a little bit more of it than what He-Man is. He-Man's sweat seemed to stand out a lot more. Can we please just stop talking about He-Man's sweat? If you have managed to pick up the Master Universe Revelation Skeletor, let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think of it. And if you have, have had a chance to already check out the Netflix five-part miniseries, Masters of the Universe Revelation, sans the spoils, please not try to spoil it for anybody that hasn't seen it yet, but at least let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think of it. I will say I didn't mind the look of Skeletor, but I really thought that Mark Hamill was poorly casted. Cast? Is it casted or is it cast? cast as the voice actor for Skeletor. I just kept thinking I was hearing a raspy joker. That's not what I consider Skeletor to be. Listen to this old guy living in the past. That's probably going to be some of the comments down below. You guys are so lovely. But yes, let me know your comments of what you guys think of Master Universe Revelations. Weigh your thoughts in down below in the comment section. If you guys are new here, enjoying all the content you're seeing and maybe you did like Master Universe Revelation, then yes, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, turn the bell notification on, and making sure, yes, you're keeping your peepers peeled to this channel, because there will be more Masters of the Universe reviews lined up and coming your way. Thanks for watching, and see you guys next time.